Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to one of our admins and this is the narration of that story. The message reads like this. Hello my brother, how are you? Can you please post my own story is anonymous. I am a young South African woman and I am only aged 28 years old. So currently I have only one child and I am scared that I am about to lose my only child because of the things that my boyfriend is doing. He's more like my fiance, but we are like staying as husband and wife. So as for my parents, they were working in the government, but now my dad, he has since retired, he's doing some other stuff, but my mom, she is still working in the government so i grew up and i was raised in the suburbs so i don't think i can say that poverty i know poverty but when we went to this other shrine after my fiance had confessed to me that these were the rituals that he had been doing all along that was when it was made known to me that if I do not decide to follow along or if I do not decide to sacrifice my child, then this means that in our family, there is going to be the spirit of poverty that is going to be chasing against my parents and chasing after my brother. So my parents, they only had like one child who was a boy. The rest of us, we are all girls. So this means that on my, my on my father's side, his entire generation will always have this curse of poverty, the spirit of poverty chasing after the, his own bloodline. And I feel like I am the one to be blamed. So for this to be corrected, I was told that I had to sacrifice my child. So for me to meet my fiance, this is what happened. This fiance of mine, he had came to our neighborhood. He was looking for a place where he can find some accommodation. This guy, he actually wanted to stay in a gated community because at that time, he was working for medic clinic but he then came to the suburbs where i was staying and maybe it was my destiny to meet up with him because on that day early in the morning i didn't have anything to do so i said let me go around just walking so as to like exercise because i was always sitting around and just chilling not doing anything sitting indoors so when i got out of my parents house when i was walking down street that was when i saw that there was this other handsome guy who was walking so this guy he then told me that he had a car but the reason as to why he was walking on foot it was because he was trying to go house by house trying to find an accommodation he wanted at least a one bachelor apartment or two rooms it was going to be okay for him so i just asked him what kind of a job he did he do and he then told me that he was a nurse but from his accent i then t told him that he was not a south african even though he had tried to tell me that he was a south african but i said no i don't think you are one we started to joke and to laugh around and there was a little bit of a chemistry that developed there so he took my numbers and i also took his own numbers and by the time that i had walked back home we were like kind of like dating each other because he said can you please uh, allow me to take you on a date and i said let me just try it but before i had gone out on a date with him there was this other friend of mine I spoke with her because she's the one who always tell me if I am about to do something that is wrong or something that is okay. So I spoke with her and I told her that, look, there is this other foreign guy who is from Zim. You are the one who has dated someone from Zim. Tell me, what am I supposed to expect in this relationship? And then she then told me that, no, it is fine. As for money, they are going to be cheap she then said that no everything is going to be fine no cheating always giving you girlfriend allowance so we were just joking there then me and that guy from zim we then went on our date and the chemistry was just too much i ended up agreeing to go with him at his place before he had shifted out of that place and then we ended up sleeping together and when i slept with him it was just different because i was used to our guys but i had never slept i had never slept with a guy from outside of the country so the experience was really different and so i was enjoying the way that he was taking good care of 
with me when I would complain about something he always would come to my rescue even if it meant that it was the last money that he had in his pocket he would just give me that money so me and this guy we ended up moving in together because I was the one who helped him to find another accommodation and the place where we are staying right now so this guy what surprised me was that there was this other night when there was a car from his other brother just came to pick him up but the car it was being driven by a guy who was from here in south africa so when he came that guy it was really late at night and i said where do you want to go at 3 a.m so i thought that maybe he's cheating on me and feeling jealous and i said i want to go with you so he refused the first day he went alone and when he went i almost cried because i said that's it this guy is cheating on me and i didn't want to lose him because of the love that he was giving to me then the next day it happened again this time around the car it came somewhere around 12 but it was being driven by that same south african guy so we then went to this other hospital but it is a government hospital the car it actually got into the premises and then there was this other guy who seemed to be like a nurse who came back and the guy was holding a five liter bottle like it was an empty orus bottle and it was full of water so it was really weird for these guys to drive around at 12 a.m just to go to this hospital to be given the, the water then this water it was taken to this other church that was where we dropped off this water we then returned back home but when we returned back home i noticed that this guy he was handed over an envelope that was full of money i just pretended as if i didn't see anything when he had left for work i then started to look for that envelope and when i looked for this envelope i then saw that there was hard cash that was there i counted the cash and it was somewhere around 85000k and they said what kind of business dealing is this then i later confronted this guy and i said what are you doing are you selling any kind of drugs because i do not want the police to arrest me i need to know now so that if i have to walk away please let me walk away this guy he loved me too much and there and there that was when he confessed everything to me he then told me that he was part of this other organization since he was working as a nurse he had access to some of his friends who were also working in the medical field so what happens is that they have these other charms that they are given and at the time when there is someone that would have died in the hospital they then go and they sprinkle the bed on which the person would have died on so they sprinkle the charms on there then after that the sheets you know those hospital sheets they take them instead of them being taken to the laundry these sheets they are taken to their own traditional healers will then use like the spirits of the people that would have died in the hospital and that was not the only thing that he was involved in so they also get this water from the mortuary when the deceased bodies are being washed at different funeral palace they also get like the water and he also told me that sometimes what they do is that they place you know like your horse pipe and then they push it into the mouth of that person that would have died then they will open the tap so the water that will be coming out like out of the anus that is the water that they collect and some of that water is then sold off to some of the pastors here and in his country this is what he told me that anyway where they are these charismatic pastors that is where they have their market because that is where the water is being sold so then the church congregants they buy that water thinking that it is holy water but it will be water that would have came from the mortuary so when he told me this story you know I didn't even know how to react because this thing it shocked the life out of me and he told me that everything was going to be okay and for his confession he said where do you want to go to so i had never been on a cruise ship so that was the first time 
that he ever sent me with my friends to go on a cruise ship. We went there and currently we are planning to go there again on MSC cruise ship in November. But what hurts me is that the money that he is using on me, it is money that he gets from selling this water that they would have washed these dead bodies at the funeral palace or at the hospitals. So I do not know if I will be able to continue and to make matters worse, I had to have a covenant with him. He told me that you should not expose me and I said I will never expose you and he said words are so easy to say, let us put something down on paper. So the way that we wrote something down on paper was by us doing a blood covenant. That So the covenant that I did with him, it had its own terms and conditions. As for me, the terms and conditions are that if I do not want the spirit of poverty to follow after my father's bloodline, then I have to sacrifice the fruits of my womb. So I have to sacrifice my child so that my father's bloodline, it cannot have this spirit of poverty. So here I am, my brother. I do not know even where to run to because I have noticed that most of our pastors, they do get this water from my fiancé and his organization. Your dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our admins. It was sent to us by our dear sister. Strange things do happen in this world. Your 